The B-21 Raider is the Air Force's new high-tech stealth bomber. It's designed from lessons learned from the B-2 Spirit, a flying wing design that costs around $2.2 billion per aircraft. Stealth comes with huge tactical and strategic advantages, but not without a pretty big cost of entry. Designed during the Cold War and delivered after the fall of the Soviet Union, the change in defense priorities meant that only a handful of these bombers were ordered, 21 in total. This time around, the Air Force plans on buying in bulk, with roughly 100 B-21s planned and the possibility for more on the table. The B-21 looks very similar to the B-2 because the fundamentals of stealth and long-range penetrating air are built around the concept of a flying wing. And that even goes back to the YB-49 when Jack Northrop actually uh, created uh, some of the first flying wings. The B-21 is also the first modernized element of the so-called nuclear triad, land-based nuclear-armed intercontinental ballistic missiles or ICBMs, submarines with nuclear-tipped missiles, and bombers that can carry nuclear weapons make up the triad. If one leg of the triad is eliminated by surprise, the others can still retaliate in the event of a nuclear war. This is the Northrop-made bomber touting a space-age stealth coating. It has the ability at some point to fly without a pilot, it's designed to deliver conventional and nuclear weapons. The U.S.'s bomber fleet is getting old. If the Air Force is going to keep ahead of the competition, then the B-21 must rise to the occasion. Stealth is what separates the B-2 from every other bomber. The shape of the aircraft combined with radar absorbent materials keep the radar cross-section, or what is detected by radar, much smaller than non-stealthy aircraft. The B-2 effectively shrinks the ability of the enemy to see it, creating paths to targets that otherwise would be much tougher to navigate. The B-2 can fly far, up to 6,000 miles without refueling, stay undetected, and hit targets with precision. And when I think about the mission statement of the United States Air Force, the fly, fight, wind, air power, and any time, anywhere, that's what the B-21 is about. The B-2 is dependent on computer systems to calculate its fly-by-wire system and to keep the flying wing design stable. In 2008, one of the expensive aircraft crashed in Guam during takeoff after a sensor was compromised by moisture, which led to a cascade of errors by the computers needed to fly the plane. We have a handful of B-2s. Um, the B-2 program uh, started in 1976. So the stealth technology, the, the avionics, um, that to the logistics, the cost to support that program simply put her outdated. In December 2022, a B-2 Spirit was damaged during an emergency landing. Not much is known about what this means for the aircraft in question, but it could end up being costly for the Air Force. This is one more reason the Air Force is aiming for triple-digit production numbers for the B-21. It would decrease the impact on the Air Force if an aircraft was lost due to accidents or combat. The Air Force has been contemplating how to replace the B-2, B-1, and B-52 bombers for decades. The B-1B Lancer is a supersonic bomber that is treaty prohibited from carrying nuclear weapons. It's also maintenance intensive and getting older. And the B-52 has been in service since the dawn of the nuclear age. It's likely they will be in service for over 80 years before the last one is retired. They will most likely serve alongside the B-21 as a non-stealthy counterpart. Believe it or not, the B-52, which has been around for a very long time and will likely keep flying past its century mark, is going to continue flying right alongside the B-21 Raider, in large part because it's just really economical and easy to update. So the future of America's bomber force will actually be its oldest bomber and the most advanced and modern stealth bomber the world has ever seen. The B-2 is not an inexpensive aircraft to operate. Each flight hour costs around $150,000. With modern logistics and lessons learned from operating the Spirit, the Air Force is hoping to drop that number for the B-21. We've taken a lot of advantage of the digital environment that's now available coming off of a lot of commercial advancements, but then applying them in a weapon system environment to design the aircraft more efficiently, to design it with a lot more precision, and, a, and design a lot more functionality and adaptability into its into its architecture. In 2021, China tested a fractional orbital bombardment system. Not much is known about it, but it could give China the capability of hitting targets worldwide in a rapid way that also evades defenses. Which begs the question, is investing in stealth bombers prudent in the age of hypersonics? 
So you spend $550 million on one B-21 Raider that can fly for the next 50 years and continue to deliver munitions, or you can spend that same amount on five hypersonic missiles, which you can only use five times. One other concern is that the United States could cut off the purchase order, which would increase the unit cost. Other weapons programs, such as the F-22 Raptor and the B-2 Spirit, have had planned production numbers which would have spread out the cost of the program, but then they were reduced to a handful of purchases. The B-21 may end up costing $753 million per copy, but the price could fluctuate depending on how many are ordered. But even that figure will only hold true if we do end up buying 100 or more like we intend. So the B-21 could be much more affordable if we ultimately order 100 or 120. Our adversaries' defenses have increased uh, tremendously since the uh, advent uh, of the B-2, again, started in 1976. Chinese and Russian uh, air defense systems, uh, the S-400, the S-500, are highly capable, they're extremely dangerous. As the threat evolves, we're gonna be able to evolve with the, not only the airplane itself, but the mission systems that go in it uh, to provide us uh, advanced capability we want to stay ahead of the threat and that's that's the goal it also represents a big savings over using non-stealth platforms for these same missions because they're not as survivable if you lose 30 b-52s to conduct a mission even though the b-52 is a cheaper aircraft you still lost a ton of money and time The B-21, which is probably going to be the stealthiest aircraft ever to fly when it enters service, cannot just deliver ordnance, but it can also collect intelligence to let us know what things are happening on the battlefield, what sorts of defenses the enemy might be fielding, and where exactly they are. It's the first part of the nuclear triad to be modernized. Um, I've been inside uh, missile silos and I've been on B-52s. These are essentially living museums. Uh, it, it's important that our nuclear triad that's provided security for decades now be modernized. The B-21 is built to be adaptable. It uses an open architecture so that it can quickly adopt new systems such as weapons built years from now. We have that open, open architecture and we have develop software in such a way that allows us to evolve that software much more rapidly on the order of days and weeks rather than months and years, as was the case in the B-2, where we were able to add capability to the B-2. It just takes a little more time, uh, and certainly we've evolved on that program uh, to the almost to the present state of the art, but now the B-21's got that built into its architecture, so it will be much more robust in the long term, and it is built around the, uh, the dimension of affordability as a fundamental. The B-21 theoretically may eventually even get a bomber wingman that's got similar capabilities, but was designed specifically to operate without a crew on board. The Air Force first announced that and then backpedaled on it because the cost was looking to be too high. But as time progresses, we may find that that's cheaper to field than more crewed bombers. So we may see a resurgence in that concept too.